Hi! Welcome to the NC Libraries Primary and Secondary Sources Tutorial. This tutorial will help you tell the difference between primary and secondary sources. You'll learn about their characteristics, you'll see some examples of each, and you'll learn how and when to use them. So why do you need to know about the differences between primary and secondary sources? Understanding different types of sources will help you to research and communicate effectively, which are essential skills for your success as a student and in the workplace. First, let's look at primary sources. Primary sources are created by those who have directly witnessed what they are describing. They are original documents and usually don't describe or analyze the work of others. They can be published or unpublished works. Some examples of primary sources include news items written at the time of an event, letters, diaries, speeches, interviews, field work, email, social media posts, works of art or literature, research data, and articles describing experimental research results. They may be published or unpublished. Primary sources can be used as the focal point of a discussion, as evidence for theories, and or to gain perspective on a topic. Now let's discuss secondary sources. Secondary sources interpret, discuss, summarize, and or analyze primary sources. These sources are at least one step removed from what they're describing. Usually secondary sources are published works. Think of secondary sources as part of the conversation about a topic. Some examples of secondary sources include textbooks, biographical works, encyclopedias, news items written after an event, and journal articles that criticize or interpret the results of a previously published research study. Secondary sources are a good place to gather background information on a topic. Use secondary sources to see what others have discussed on that topic and build on these discussions with your own ideas in your paper. You can also use secondary sources to investigate what subtopics have already been explored on your topic. Let's take a moment to compare some examples of primary and secondary sources. A journal article that outlines the results of a study on nursing workloads would be considered a primary source. In contrast, a journal article that interprets the results of this study on nursing workloads to support new ideas about improvements to healthcare would be considered a secondary source. Another example of a primary source would be raw, unanalyzed data tables provided by Statistics Canada that describe the annual amount of alcohol sales in Canada. An article that uses these statistics to analyze trends in Canadian wine sales would be a secondary source. A source's classification as primary or secondary can change depending on the topic that you're studying. For example, if you're writing about how news is represented on the internet, a news site like cbc.ca could be considered a primary source since cbc.ca represents the object that you're studying. However, if you're writing about consumer debt in Canada and you find an article on cbc.ca that analyzes it, the article would be considered a secondary source since that article is a step removed from your topic. To recap, Secondary sources usually interpret or analyze primary sources in some way. Primary sources usually represent first-hand accounts or direct evidence, whereas secondary sources are at least one step removed from the topic being discussed. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, contact your campus library. Visit our website at niagaracollege.ca slash library for full contact information. All photographs used in this tutorial are courtesy of unsplash.com.